energy law it's very interesting because it covers um, many subsets so you have oil and gas which is full front line of energy and then you have petrochemical infrastructure related and of course the new one is renewables that everyone is talking about and even within energy itself we often have the contract ones meaning contract documentation being power purchase agreement the JVA joint venture agreement before you get into it and then you even have um, any service agreement, the long-term service agreement that you have to deal with and thereafter you have the back of the actual construction related or engineering related so you have your EPCC and other related um, agreement which is relation to operation and maintenance of the power plants. I think it's got to be my third arbitration, third energy arbitration where I was before we were before two QC, two Queen's Council and one of our retired uh, Court of Appeal judge, if I remember correctly. They were seeing me flipping papers for my, for my um, main council, my lead council, and they basically just posted this question to me, or to our team, and say that, can we have your junior council to speak? So I was so shocked because I was like, what? Like, I'm the solicitor, I'm not really the junior council, and why should I, you know, speak up? So, and even until this year, early this year, I met up with one of the Queen's Council and he was saying, so are you talking now in arbitration? Because it's arbitration often, or energy arbitration often involve very, very high stake of amounts, like run up to hundreds of millions. So clients would often prefer senior member of the bar or senior members to speak up. So I think that perspective of an arbitrator a senior arbitrator to me is really valuable and I actually conducted the cross-examination for the quantum witness which is somewhat less important and and yeah I enjoyed I enjoyed that a lot yeah I think for this area of practice you really got to be really passionate about the subject matter and that's going to make a difference so you actually put your heart into understanding the either the idea behind the PPA calculations or the operational part of it. So what went wrong and what is actually in the RC, the root cause analysis, and try to distill and understand what happened behind that, the, the equipment and all with your clients. So working with your clients is very important. And come to think about it, unfortunately now being offered is a common. So I'm actually on half the common with uh, one of the leading um, independent power producer in Malaysia. So being able to be in the common with an energy company actually teaches you a lot of things. For example, you learn about what is their business objective and goal so you can work together with them to achieve it rather than from a legal perspective where you're just working to win the case or to defend any legal arguments. So that might not be the best solutions that your client wants. So being in-house, you are able to see much more. For example, I work with the business venture team where you actually review any joint venture agreement and you are actually working, if there's any public announcement, you can work with the investor relation department, which you don't get it if you're in-house. And also even quarterly reports that you see uh, different analysts and how the management team actually face the analysts and answer the questions. So these are very interesting aspects where being in legal practice, you might not be able to see these different facets of um, the corporate world. The other part of legal practice or like new legal uh, lawyers need to be well equipped of. You need to be very, you need to be very commercially sound or aware of what your clients actually want. So what is in the best interest of a client for the sustainable business development, rather than a short term answer, legal answer, or legal solution. Mm. Fortunate enough because I have a really really good mentor, you know, which I told you earlier, is Dr. Nitina Karni, where I he's always because he has been my supervisor since the first year of my practice. So he has been there guiding me, telling me, you know, what are the things to look out for and also I don't really require uh, anything that I wish to know in advance. So because I can always turn to him to discuss things with him. So I think the most important thing is you need to have a very good um, working relationship with your mentor, with your firm and a very strong teamwork within your practice group. So for us, for me, myself, I'm fortunate enough that I have really good teammates and really friendly people. So that's one thing that I, 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 you know, I, I hope that everyone can have in their practice life. Yeah. 
I would say take a chance, take calculated risk. And I think throughout my short term legal practice, I took two risks or two unconventional decisions. One is I went off after I got promoted to do my master in arbitration, international arbitration with the National University of Singapore while working part time with Lee Shamudin, so they're like half funding my studies. Um, and the second one would be again, I'm on secondment now with the, one of the largest uh, IPP in Malaysia. So that allowed me to learn about commercial aspect of uh, practice or, or about the commercial world. So those are the two different routes that I've taken and I think it really, really helped me with my career very, a lot. So take a chance, take um, uh, uncalculated risk, yes. <laughs>